Generative Design Loads and Constraints. In this video, we'll apply a load, apply a constraint, and we'll clone a load case. In Fusion 360, you can carry on with your own design, or you can upload the supplied Generative Design Geometry Setup V5. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to rename Load Case 1 by selecting it and then left clicking again. We're going to call this our static load. We're going to assume that the motorcycle is completely compressed from both ends and statically loaded. In order to do that, let's expand the loads and notice that gravity is already applied. You can see at the rear wheel at the origin of our coordinate system that gravity is pointing down, so the orientation is correct. But we want to go ahead and apply the constraints on our frame to define the rest of our loading. We're going to start by adding a structural constraint, and because this might be difficult with all of the other geometry included, I'm going to hide my obstacle geometry, so that way I'm only looking at the rest of the geometry, as well as our preserve regions. So for our fixed constraint, we're going to be taking a look at our frame mounts. And I'm going to include a fixed constraint on the inside of my frame mounts in all three directions. When we're making our loads and constraints for a generative design study, it is extremely important that we accurately represent the real world. Because I am treating this as a structural frame member, I am going to assume that all these points are going to be fixed for the rest of my design, and I'll be loading the rear shock as well as the front stem. However, for your designs, you need to make sure that you do replicate those real world scenarios. Let's go ahead and hide the obstacle geometry again, and note that we have an unassigned geometry section, which we can hide all unassigned geometry. This once again will help us quickly and easily see just the geometry of interest. Now that we have our fixed constraint, let's talk about applying those static loads. We're going to do this by going to structural loads, and we're going to apply a force to the bottom of the steering stem. When the suspension is compressed at the front of the motorcycle, the load is applied to the steering stem of the frame through the forks and through the triple clamp. We're going to assume that we have a 30 kilonewton force. So this is going to be 30000 or 30,000 newtons, and it's going to be pointing in the direction of our stem. Next, we need to incorporate a load at the rear shock. So I'm going to use the right-click marking menu to repeat the structural loads, and I'm going to place the load on the inside faces for both of these. In reality, this is going to be a bearing load. Now, the bearing load is going to be applied just across the upper section or the direction of the load being applied, and it is a parabolic distribution. It's not going to be entirely applied to those faces, but you'll note that we have arrows that are currently pointing down. We need these to point up and in the direction of the shock. In our case, the shock is at about 175 degrees, but with the orientation of this load, it's going to be minus 185. The load that we're going to apply is 24,675 newtons. We're going to say OK. And now we have the load applied for our rear shock and for the front forks. This only accounts for our first load case, which is our static loading. What we want to do at this point is we want to now incorporate some additional loading that's going to happen on the front of the motorcycle. While the rear of the motorcycle with a single shock is going to remain relatively the same in terms of the loading conditions, what we will see is that the front is going to encounter braking forces as well as torsion from leaning. So we're going to right click on static and we're going to select clone load case. When we clone a load case, we need to activate it and we need to take a look at what was brought forward. The constraints that we applied for our motor mounts as well as the force and the bearing load. What we want to do from here is we want to modify the force that's applied to the forks. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to rename static one. This is going to be my torsion load. So this torsion load is not going to be a single force applied to the bottom face. So what I want to do is either delete or suppress this force. We can suppress it by clicking on the check mark in the box to the left, or we can right click and delete it altogether. Then I want to apply a structural load. What I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to take a load and apply it to the upper face of the stem in one direction. So I'm going to rotate this around to minus 90 degrees. 
and we can manually enter minus 90 if it's easier. Keeping in mind that we are using a force which will be applied to the entire outside of this face, we could include this as a bearing load, which would only apply to half of it. If we wanna change that to a bearing load, note that the direction also changes. So I'm gonna set this to minus 90, so it's pointing to the left, and we're gonna include a load, in this case, of 15,000 newtons. So we're gonna set this at 15,000, and that's 15,000 pointing to the minus x direction. We need to apply that same load in the opposite direction on the bottom. Well, what we can do is we can take this torsion load, which I'll rename as torsion T for top. We can right click on it and we can copy it. Now, if we copy a load and then we right click and we paste the load, notice that we don't have the same option that we did when we tried to clone it. We don't have the same ability to just simply take a load and copy it over as we do the entire load case. What we want to do is we want to go to the top of the loads and we want to select paste. Now this gives us the available option to rename it and modify what was selected and the direction. Now that we have torsion L, we can edit. We're going to change the face target to this bottom face and we want to change the direction so that it's pointing to the right or positive 90 degrees. Now what we've done is we've created a second load case that looks at twisting the front position of the frame. We're gonna take this torsion and we're gonna clone this load case. Once it's cloned, again, we're gonna activate it. We're gonna rename it. And instead of torsion one, we're gonna call this one torsion two. And then we wanna modify the load cases. We're gonna modify the torsion at the top to be positive 90 degrees. So it's pointing to the right. And we'll modify torsion L at the bottom to be negative 90 degrees. So it's pointing to the other direction. Now that we've accounted for our static loading, which is just completely fully compressed rear suspension and front suspension, and we've incorporated some torsion that's introduced into the frame, we now need to take into account some braking loads. Now, braking loads, we can simply take this torsion load case and we can clone it as well. And then we're gonna rename the new load case to be a braking load. So we wanna activate it. We'll call this one braking. And in the case of the braking load case, we're gonna take that torsion top. And when we have the torsion top, what we're doing is we're actually going to be having a load pointing forward on the frame. So if we were to point this forward, it's gonna to go to zero degrees. The load in this case will simply keep at 15,000 Newtons. And then we wanna modify the torsion L or the torsion lower. And this one's gonna be pointing backwards. And the reason that we do this is because in reality, when the front wheel of the motorcycle is braking, it's compressing, but it's also pushing backwards on this lower section. And based on the mechanics of the frame, it's actually going to be introducing a little bit of tension in the top section of the frame. So while these numbers might be higher than expected, or it might be the inclusion of some additional loading, this gives us a very good representation of statically loading, twisting the frame about the Z axis left and right, and also twisting the front about the X axis under braking. Again, there are more loads and we're not taking a look at all of the dynamic loads that are included on a motorcycle frame, but this will allow us to understand the process and give us a good result. So from here, let's make sure that we do save our design. I am going to leave the obstacle geometry hidden, but I wanna make sure that I do save this design before moving on.